All right, so this is for you, those of you that were absent today. Um, if, you, if you complete these problems along with me in your packet, that will help catch you up in math. Um, so today what we did is we kind of took it, uh, what we did previously a step further. So the last couple um, lessons, remote and in class, we practice writing expressions, one-step expressions and two-step expressions using variables. So today we're going to do the same thing. Um, we're going to write a let statement, we're going to write an expression, and then sometimes we're going to evaluate it if we have a number. So this is kind of like translating. We're taking a little, little situation here and we're writing it using math. We're going to use numbers, we're going to use symbols, we're going to use variables, and then we're going to see if we can evaluate it if we have enough information. So for example, on page 21, or on the top of page 21, it says Tim has 10 less than three times as many lawn gnomes as his neighbor Gord. Write an expression to represent the total number of lawn gnomes Tim has. So here's the key phrase we're looking at here. Tim has 10 less than three times as many lawn gnomes as his friend, as his, excuse me, as his neighbor, Gord. Hopefully they're friends. So we got to think, what, well, what do we not know? Well, we don't know how many lawn gnomes Gord has. Okay, we don't know how many, if we knew how many lawn gnomes Gord has, we can figure out how many Tim has, but we don't. We don't know that information. So we're going to write a let statement. Let G equal number of lawn, whoop, lawn gnomes, with a silent G, of course, Gord has. So Gord has three times as many and then 10 less. So that times, again, is going to be multiplication. 10 less is going to be subtraction. So we're going to start with the times. We're going to start with the multiplication. So he is 10 less than 3 times. Well, here's 3 times. 3 times g. That's 3 times as many lawn gnomes. But he has 10 less than that. So then to show 10 less, we're going to subtract 10. 3g minus 10. Now, if we never knew how many lawn gnomes g, uh, Gord has, we would not be able to find out the total number that Tim has because that's a variable. We don't know the number. However, if you look at this last column here that we'll look at at the end, it says evaluate if Gord has six lawn gnomes. All right, so then we're going to use our expression to see how many Tim would have if Gord has six. So we're going to write this expression, three times G minus 10. G is six because that's how many lawn gnomes Gord has. So it'd be three times six minus 10. Well, what would we do first? Parentheses, no powers and roots, no. Multiplication and division from left to right. We're going to do the multiplication first. 3 times 6 is 18 minus 10 would be 8. So this would be the answer. Now, we were only able, to, again, again, to get a single number answer because we knew at, at the last step how many lawn gnomes Gord has. All right, let's try, let's try another one here. Eight friends went to Daring Lake. Each person bought a ticket for N dollars. Five of the friends also bought a giant gummy bear for six dollars. Write and simplify an expression to represent the total amount of money the friends spent. Okay, so we have eight people going to Daring Lake. Each person bought a ticket for N dollars. Well, they actually give us the variable here. That's kind of nice. We still have to write a let statement, but we already know what the let what the variable is. It's N. So we're going to let n, and what does n equal? It says each person bought a ticket for n dollars. That, that's how much the ticket is. That's the cost of the ticket. So we're going to let n equal cost of ticket. All right, eight friends went to Darien Lake. Each person bought a ticket for n dollars. That means they, there were eight tickets that were purchased. So each ticket is n. Eight tickets would be eight times n. But that's not all they bought. Five of the friends also bought a giant gummy bear. So that's how much they spent in tickets, plus five of the friends bought a giant gummy bear for six dollars. So five people 
times six would tell us how much they spent on giant gummy bears. It's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. All right. So right now, this expression looks good, but we can actually simplify this because we can do five times six. So it would wind up being eight times n plus 30. That would be our final expression. That's called simplifying. When we can, when we, when we can actually do the math here, we can simplify it. So our expression is 8n plus 30. Eight people bought a ticket for n dollars, plus they spent $30 on the giant gummy bear. Oh, now we can evaluate it. Because they gave us a number here for the ticket, we can actually find the total cost of what they spent. Because instead of n, we can do 8. So I'm going to write the expression. 8 times n plus 30. 8 is the cost of the ticket, so it's going to be 8 times 8 plus 30. Well, we do the multiplication before addition. 8 times 8, 64, plus 30. Then we do the addition here. 64 plus 30 would be 96 bucks. So a lot, of my, a lot of that money was spent on the giant gummy bear. So hopefully, hopefully that giant gummy bear was worth it. It probably was. All right. Let's take a look at this example. It says, a sporting goods store was selling a pack of nine baseballs and two bats together. Each baseball costs B dollars and each bat was T dollars. Write and simplify an expression to represent the cost of seven of these packs. Well, this is a tough one. All right. So first thing I notice is that there are two variables here. There's B. They give us B, and they give us T on your own. Feel free. And then you can check with me when you, when you finish. A kangaroo jumps four more than three times the distance that a tree frog can jump. Write and evaluate an expression to represent the distance a kangaroo can jump. Well, what do we not know? We don't know how far the tree frog can, can jump. So we're going to let um, D equal the distance tree frog can jump. A kangaroo jumps four feet more. It should be four feet more than three times the distance. So times is going to be multiplication. More is going to be add. Four feet more is going to be adding. So we're going to multiply first. So it's going to be three times D. And then we have to add on that four at the end because that's it's three times more and then four more than that. So 3D plus four. Now, again, if we didn't know what the D stood for, we um, couldn't evaluate it, but it says here, evaluate if a tree frog can jump seven feet. All right, let's do it. So we're going to rewrite the expression. Instead of D, we're going to put seven because that's the distance a tree frog can jump. Plus four. We do the multiplication before the addition. That's 21 plus four, which is 25 feet. Nice. So that's how far the kangaroo can jump. If the tree frog can jump seven feet, the kangaroo can jump three times more than that, which would be 21, and then a four additional feet. That would be 25 feet. Nice job, kangaroo. That's a, lot, that's a lot of feet. That's a lot of feet there. All right. For nine weeks in the summer, Julie mowed the lawn every day for N, M minutes. Well, there's our variable right there. So we're going to let M equal... We want every day for n minutes. Um, number of minutes Julie mowed a lawn. So this is per lawn. Each lawn took n minutes. For nine weeks in the summer, Julie mowed the lawn every day for n minutes. During four of these weeks, she also cleaned her parents' car. Yikes. Which took her 15 minutes each time. Write and simplify an expression to represent how much time Julie spent doing chores for those nine weeks. Now, every for nine weeks in the summer, Julie mowed the lawn every day for M minutes. Should be every 
week. It should be every week because that'd be extreme if she did it every day. Every week for M minutes. So nine weeks, M minutes per week. So nine times M would be how many, how much time she mows the lawn in total. She mows the lawn nine, for nine weeks, M minutes a week. Now, but four of those weeks, she cleaned the car for 15 minutes each time. So four times she cleaned the car, which took 15 minutes. Nine weeks, M minutes per week for mowing the lawn. Four times 15 will give uh, you how much time she spent cleaning the car. Now we can simplify this a little bit because we can we can multiply that four times fifteen. Four times fifteen would be sixty. So there's our expression nine m plus sixty. Now if we didn't know what m was, we couldn't evaluate it, but we can because it says it takes twenty five minutes to mow. So nine times m plus sixty is our expression. 9 times 25 plus 60. Now, 9 times 25 is like 9 quarters. 8 quarters is $2, 200. 9 quarters would be 225 plus 60. 225 plus 60 is 285, 285 minutes. Wow. But that's over 9 weeks. That's like 2 months of work. So she's not, she's not doing that all in one day, which would be 